Does that look like word puzzles? If, if you've ever read the newspaper or get the little puzzle books, you have the little puzzles where you have a series of letters and they're kind of scrambled up and you've got to put the letters back in order. Well, I'm going to give you a puzzle. I'm going to give you one of those, okay? All right, are you ready? I'm going to have you write the word jest, J-E-S-T. Now, J, a jest is a word, okay? I'm going to give you a hint on that one, okay? That word is incomplete. Okay, now if you know the answer to this, but the people who don't have the answer. Now, the next uh, series of letters I'd like to write down is TUPS. T U P S. TUPS. Okay? The next word I'd like you to write down is through. T H R U. And the final word is daily. D A I L Y. Now, through and daily are actual words, and you don't have to unscramble them, so that's the good news, okay? It's that second word, tops. Tops is not a word in the English language, okay? You gotta unscramble that to, to complete the sentence. Now again, let me give you one little hint again. The word just is incomplete. And we'll revisit this after, okay? In 1974, a man by the name of William Brian Key put out a book called Subliminal Seduction. And in this book, he claimed that advertisers, and especially in magazines, were putting subliminal things inside of their ads. He quoted one, um, one ad, it was for gin, and there was a glass and there was some ice cubes there. And airbrushed into one of the ice cubes was the word sex, S-E-X. And it was supposed to be a subliminal way of reaching you and attracting you to this particular product. When I was uh, in my teenage years, I took a course in speed reading. And when you read, let's say you read to yourself, okay, you read silently. And let's say you read this word and say, who is he according to John? Well, as you read, you get this little voice inside of your head that reads to you. Who is he according to John? Okay? Now, with speed reading, what they say is they say, get rid of that little voice. I want you to look at the words, and if you see those words, your brain will pick it up. So you just look at the words, and your brain will pick it up on a subconscious type of level. That was the theory behind the speed reading course. Well, the Watchtower has put some unusual things in its drawings. And people in the early 80s started to pick up on these things. One person who picked up was a man by the name of Derek Barefoot. And he started to pick up on these little strange drawings in the Watchtower's um, pictures. And what he did was he wrote to the society, he wrote to the elder, to the governing body, he wrote to the elder, he wrote, and he gently said, hey, listen, you know, I've been finding these things, can you please check this out? Well, he, they didn't really check it out, but they just sell the ship them for it. <laughs> you know, they said, pasta la pasta. <laughs> I'm Italian, so I don't know how to And I'd like to show you some of these drawings right now, and I want you to see for yourself what you think about some of these drawings, okay? Now my beautiful wife Sharon is over here, and what I've done was, all these pictures are on the screen right here. I'm gonna point them out, but she's gonna pass out, I've got three copies of each of them. She's gonna pass out so you can get a good close look at what we're talking about. I want you to see, now if you can't see these pictures in there, let me know, okay? But I think I've tried to make it as clear as we possibly can, okay? Uh, um, the first one is from the February 1st, 1983 Watchtower. Can I grab this and pull it with me here? No. Thank you. 
actually can take these one today. The first one is from the Watchtower from February 1st, 1983, page 17. Okay? You're going to notice this little scene right over here. You've got a lady with the watchtowers, and you've got a couple ladies talking about that little dog over there. But hidden inside this woman's skirt, right over here, there's a face. Right, there's a face. But that face is the, of the, the, the false Greek god Zeus. Right in her dress, right over here. Okay? Now, as Rick mentioned, I am a professional photographer. I look at people every day. I look at their clothing every day. I have to look at wrinkles. Okay? And I have to study them. And I have to get them out of there. You know, a beautiful little high school senior girl doesn't want wrinkled clothes. So, you know, I'm constantly pulling, pulling down sleeves, blouses, and things like that. I'm always fighting against uh, wrinkles. Because I know that if I don't get it out in the pic, uh, when I'm taking the picture, I'm going to get it out on the computer with my digital photography. And believe me, I've, I've had to retouch my share of wrinkles. All right? But in all my 21 years of being a professional photographer and doing this, I have never seen the face of Zeus inside of anyone's clothing. <laughs> Has anyone ever seen the face of Zeus in someone's clothing? I, I know these strange cons of t-shirts, they probably have bizarre pictures, but you know. All right, the next one we're going to do, I'll do a little series on clothing. We're going to look right up at this, this is the Awake from May 22nd, 1988, on page 25. We've got a picture of Abraham with his, his staff and everything. Right inside of his clothing, there is a face, eyes, nose, and a very long chin. Looks like the skull of Jay Leno. <laughs> but a very long... Again, in all my years of being a professional photographer, I have never seen a face inside of someone's clothing made from the wrinkles themselves. They don't do that. Wrinkles go parallel. They go up and down or they go left to right. They don't go this way and they don't make faces. Okay? The next one you see here is from the Watchtower, February 15th, 1990, page 25. Here we see a very thirsty man. And this thirsty man, on his arm, the way he's drinking, okay? Look at my arm. Do you see a face there? No, you probably see something I, I should know. Work out more. You see a face, a demonic face with a little horn. And right inside the mouth are the letters J A H. This doesn't happen in real life. This does not happen. Next, we're going to come down to the Revelation book. That, that and the Live Forever book, I love those books. The Revelation book, right here on page. 159, you will see John eating the scroll, a picture of, of supposed, to, supposed to be John eating the scroll, and an angel with his hand stuck out. If you look in the hand, you will see the false, the, the face of the false god Pan. Yeah, I'm right up over here too. That's the face right there. All right. Oh, well, guess what? So, so, so far we've seen false gods and a mockery of God's name right over here. Okay? Next one I'd like to do, this, this next one is real blasphemous. Oh, there it is right here. This one's real blasphemous. Revelation book. Uh, page one, is it 121? I don't know how to do that. Page 121, okay? You see this, this crowd of people with the olive branches or the palm branches? And this is supposed to be God's throne. And what I've done is I've taken that yellow God's throne and just made it into black and white. And his face appears. The face of a demon. Or it could be Satan himself. With the horn sticking up. Right inside a watchtower material. It's God's organization, isn't it? Uh, my next one. My favorite book. Revelation book. Page 19. We see the gentleman, the, uh, the, the, the archer on the horse. All you're going to do is take this picture, skew it a little bit to the side, and you get a face blowing fire. All right? 
I have also had classes in horse photography. I photographed it. So I have had classes in horse photography. I have photographed horses. I have never seen a, a fire-breathing face inside of a horse before. Okay? Uh, the next one is from the Live Forever book. This is, my wife found this one. This, this is a good one. Uh, page nine. You have this, this scary scene of a, a, a man being frightened and guns and stuff like that. But right inside the sick man, and I have a module right here, you've got a skull right on the man's forehead. Okay? Now, this is not like laying on your back in the grass on a nice summer day and looking up at the clouds and making an elephant or a giraffe out of the clouds. Every drop of ink that hits that paper was put there on purpose. And every drop of ink that was not put there in the middle of the ink, reversed out, was left out for a reason. Again, these, this is not a photograph. These are drawings. The artist is responsible for every drop of ink that goes on there. That's my next one. Oh, that's really good. Also in the left hand book, page 144. Okay? This is supposedly Jesus, although Mary Magdalene thought he was the gardener. But right in the trees, right over here, is a skeleton. Okay? This is the regular picture. I've cut it out over here, and I've isolated it right here. Okay? Trees do not grow like that. Trees do not have legs. Not even in the Wizard of Oz, and like the trunks. But this one has legs and a skull right on top of the legs, or right, right on top of the torso right over here. This is right inside of Watchtower material. Okay. We've gone through everything right here. Now, let me ask you, does everybody see these? Is this my imagination, or is this really... Do you see what's going on here? This is right inside of what is called God's organization. God's good, clean organization. Now, again, people started to write to the society and said, listen, we've seen these things. Watch how his responses, well, they're not there. By you making these accusations, you are spreading rumors and slandering these good, fine Christian artists who are drawing these. The Watchtower for September 1st, 1984, page 20, under the heading Spreading Rumors. Listen to this. Even the Watchtower Society's publications have been the subject of rumors. For example, that one of the artists had been secretly been introducing pictures of demons into the illustrations was subsequently found out and disfellowshipped. Did you share in the spreading of these stories? If so, you were perhaps unwittingly spreading an untruth since they were all false. Certainly the rumor concerning the society's publications was harmful as well as slanderous to the zealous Christians who worked long hours producing eyework to make the magazines, brochures, and books more attractive. In true Watchtower form, they blame the people. You always find that, huh? You know, when 1940, when uh, 1975 came around, who do they blame? You know, they're going ahead of the society. They, they always find a way to blame the people. Rutherford did it in the center of Samaria, all that sort of thing. They blame their fools. Jones would just take so much abuse, don't they? <laughs> you know? For, for, from their own leaders. <laughs> also in the Watchtower for um, April 1st, 1987, on page 15, um, it says, quote, Every article in both the Watchtower and Awake, and every page, including the artwork, is scrutinized by selected members of the governing body before it is printed. This is approved of by the governing body. They approve of the demon faces. They approve of the blasphemy, the false gods, the skeletons. If you got a chance to look at the, the um, left rubber book, it's full of skulls. Oh, full of it. Um, now, if you, if you want to write some of these down, that, you know, when you see, write some of these things down. And if you still have material at home, look it up yourself. There's something about pulling out your own bookshelf and opening up that page and seeing it for yourself that makes you go, ah. Yeah. 
It's pretty powerful. Pretty powerful. All right, back to my word puzzle. Has anyone figured it out? No one has figured it out? We've been watching you. <laughs> I'm glad. All right, let me help you figure it out, all right? I'm going to give you the answer for this one. Okay? Like I said, the word just is incomplete. The second word, tops, T-U-P-S. All you got to do, this is real simple, okay, is take the letters and flip them around. Okay? It spells spot, S-P-U-T. But, all, but I, as I mentioned before, that word just is incomplete. Just take that S and just slide it right over to just. And what do you got? Somebody read it out to me? Yeah. Well, we'll give it the whole thing. Just put through daily. Just put through daily. You know? The Watchtower saying has called you fools in the past and they're calling you fools again. You know? Just. Put through David. What is a jest? A jest is a taunt, a joke, or a mock. Jest, <coughs> put through daily. I think that describes the watchtower pretty well. I've only seen the surface of this. Um, I, I like to go into phrenology and all these different things, but this is all the time allows me to move back down eight minutes over my schedule. Sorry about that. But, Oh yes, we're going to pass on these too. Um, yeah. This is this is the jest. This is the <clears throat> the jest tops through daily. That is from the Watchtower from 11 1, 89, page 10. You've got this nice young beautiful witness couple, and you've got this this film of demonic and and full of sex and violence and kind of symbolizing the movies. It's full of this, but in the marquee way in the back, you've got jest. Uh, the, the first motion picture is jest tops. Now, I don't watch a lot of films, but I've never heard of a film called Just Tops. And the second film was True Daily. I've never heard of a film called True Daily before. <coughs> put that together, Just Put True Daily. And again, I believe that's the Watchtower Society.